I'm here at my mower dealer today because I've been thinking about possibly getting a Toro walk behind 30 inch to see if that will save some time, uh, shave some time off the mow route for the guys because the guy with the grandstand, the crew with the grandstand, they're getting done probably two hours before the crew with just the 21 inch Honda mowers and and we've got gardens to clean, mulching to do, all these things to do after that the guys could be doing after they finish a mow route. So I need to try to figure out a way to get them done faster so we can start doing some of those some of those other garden jobs, power rakings, things like that. So let's see. price would be 2100 with tax so I am saving quite a bit if I do get this 30 inch so while I was at in the mower dealer um, yesterday there was a pace rep you know trying to trying to um, I don't know distribute these to that dealer and since that dealer doesn't have any of these mowers um, they thought they'd let me demo it so I can kind of let them know what I think about it. So this is a, I guess a Y Bravo commercial 25 inch. And that's why they're letting me demo it because they know I want I want a bigger mower, but I don't want a grandstand. So, so anyway, as you can see, this mower is pretty durable. You know, it's got just durability written all over this thing so the cables are inside the pipe um, it's got a safety for the blade um, it's got a a high speed and a low speed and a neutral so without the self propel if you wanted to go that way um, I don't know Kawasaki engine Pretty much the same engine as that Toro 30 inch that I'm looking to get. Um, it's got one bar frame for the two tires in the front, so there's no chance of wobbling. I think that's pretty cool. 25 inch, it's got a lip guard underneath here um, that goes in about, I don't know, an inch uh, for better suction for bagging. Now I did forget to grab the mulch plug. Um, so we weren't able to mulch this thing yesterday. But anyway, I I know of one other person that has you that actually has these. I mean, I only heard through another person that he really likes it. So I don't know. Um, after the, sh after the shift was over, I asked my Mo guy what he thought, and he really didn't like it, but that was all I had chance to get from him. I just real quick, hey, what'd you think of the mower? He goes, I don't really like it. And I said, all right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. So I'm gonna, if he shows up here, I'll, I'm gonna ask him to elaborate a little bit on that. But, you know, 25 inch, bigger than the 22. And there's the man right there. What up, Will? Hey, so why don't you like it? It's too clumsy, it's too heavy, it's too much. That's it? For three inches, it's not enough. Really? Yeah. You Me. think, so you think if we had the 30 inch, you'd have a better cut? As long as it ain't clunky like that, bro. Well, so when you say clunky, what does that mean? Like you don't maneuver like the other one, sir. Because the 30 inch isn't gonna, doesn't look much easier, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, for three inches, I don't think it's worth it. Okay. Because as fast as you can go, you can run things over really easy. You can know, slow down real fast. So this thing goes really fast? Yeah, it goes fast. Like maybe too fast? Uh, I don't know how to use it right now. Maybe if I learn how to use it right 
All right. So there you go. That's our review of the Y Bravo. Okay, yesterday I got my ass kicked with complaints. Uh, we got four complaints just yesterday. Uh, angry complaints too, not just, you know, an email. These were upset customers who say they spend way too much money with us to have brown spots, like dry spots in the lawn. <sighs> you know, it's really not our fault that they need to water more. I mean, sometimes we do our best to let them know. We send them an email when we think it's pretty dry and we say, you know, your lawn is drying. Um, you're gonna need to water more. Uh, but, but the complaints that were yesterday were because they have little spots of dry spots, like not the whole lawn, just a patch there, a patch there. And I mean, I understand as a business owner that that's a good sales opportunity to try to upsell every customer that has a dry spot. The problem is right now, we have so many customers who are paying to have big sprinkler problems fixed that we're not trying to upsell every single customer right now because we're on a two week wait right now. Um, so, I mean, I guess what we could do is just upsell it and tell them, hey, if you guys decide to do this, we're on a two week wait right now. You know, maybe that's, that's realistic, but I just, you know, when we're there to mow, so, so one of the customers says, you know, they pay $60 a week and that is a lot of money. I know it is, but that's to mow and that covers their fertilizer program and that covers us garden weed treatment. So, I mean, we're not there to check their sprinklers. That's not included in the price. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe I need to come up with some kind of package that does include dry spots. Um, I really think it'll do well, um, but I also think there needs to be some kind of, we need to be educating the customer a little sooner, maybe, maybe during the cool spring months. Um, we say, you know, we need to make sure your sprinklers are all, are all checked. Maybe before the summer sprinkler rush comes, we need to be upselling to check their timer and sprinklers um, before that summer sprinkler rush comes because, and, and they don't need to have their sprinklers turned on, like dialed on, programmed to turn on automatically, but just for us to go through each zone and then we'll turn it back off. Um, but that way, so when they do turn their system on, everything's working and covering good. I don't know, man, I just, I just hate that feeling when all the customers are out to get you. They're really not, but I feel like that when, when you have multiple customers complaining in the same day. So we had four yesterday complain, but we've actually had, you know, probably 10 this whole week, if you add up all the days with those same kind of complaints. And it makes me feel bad because I try really hard to make sure that all the customers are well taken care of, that nobody complains, that the lawns look great, but when they're complaining, over an issue that I feel I don't really have control over, um, that that bugs me. Um, but I, at the same time, I also understand they're paying a lot of money. They're paying good money, and but you know, and maybe we need to educate the customer a little bit better about, hey, sprinklers. You know, we can we'll notice a, a dry spot, but how are we gonna know that the sprinklers aren't covering that unless we're actually looking at the sprinklers when they're turned on? And, and as mower guys and as the fertilizer guy and as the garden worker guy, most of the time, nobody is watching the sprinklers unless the sprinkler guy goes and is actually has a work order to do some work. Other than that, we never turn sprinklers on. Uh, we'll notify the customer when the lawn overall is dry and we know that they're not turning on their sprinklers or that we definitely need to advise them to up the water. Uh, but when there's just one little brown spot, that's gonna go missed. I mean, 
we're never going to catch every single little brown spot because our guys, when they get to a property, their main focus is edging, trimming, mowing, hustling, getting done, moving on to the next one. They're not there to, to evaluate every single lawn. If we did that, we wouldn't be able to get through the list, you know? So, so I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of what I dealt with yesterday. Um, today I'm actually meeting uh, one of my friends and colleagues who has one of the I don't know top two or three lawn care companies in the area as far as fertilizing companies the biggest well-known company around here as far as I'm concerned it's like top two or three um, and we're gonna we're gonna go do an evaluation on a property that customer had a valid complaint this one was valid and he was actually the nicest one out of all the complaints this week his I don't even want to call it a complaint it was a it was a service call that he he wants to pay for to have me evaluate and figure out why his lawn is dying um, and of course I'm not gonna charge him but my point is he was being really cool about it um, and we're gonna figure it out I went and looked at it I can't tell why his lawn is just frying out and uh, so I've called my buddy who does evals all day long to see what he thinks. One of the complaints uh, my sprinkler guy just went and looked at, he said it's not that bad. It's just taking long to come back because the sprinklers were off the whole year. And there's this little section that he thinks that if I put some green up fertilizer, it'll come back quick. So I'm going to, let me turn this around. So Nitro King is what I'm going to use today for this one because this product works super fast it's got two percent iron so it is i mean this thing dark green color and it does not lie the only thing is you have to make sure to water this in within 12 hours 24 hours the latest because this thing will burn your lawn and so but it works so good if you have a customer that wants their lawn greened up quick I'm talking fast. Use this. It will green up a lawn within three day, three to four days. It will be dark green. By the way, that's the garden manager, Rachel. Oh, I'm in it. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> She's doing estimates today. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So I would say that this week I've pretty much entered a new role into my company here um, mainly my biggest thing right now is I'm fully I, I don't know if I'm fully staffed but I'm staffed enough to where I'm actually more I'm making more money directing everybody and making sure everybody is got work has a list constantly until the end of the day then I am out there on a route making you know, mowing. Um, I'm still fertilizing, although I'm, I'm completely caught up with my list right now. Um, so this week, I literally, with my office girl gone, she, she's on vacation. So, so I'm here at the office just kind of like working on equipment in the shop, answering the phone when it rings, going out, doing a quick walkthrough on first time mow estimates. Um, that's about it and but then the real the real work that I do comes when I am trying to figure out how to keep the guys busy around three o'clock because around three o'clock the crews are are either nearing the end of their route that they were given in the morning and so it, it's like a seesaw one of the crews has a lot more jobs the other one's almost done so it's my job around three o'clock to kind of balance it out again to make sure their list is going to be good till the end of the day so normally um, that gets missed when I'm out there working because um, it's hard for the office manager to answer phones and and take care of like um, s write up estimates and and looking at all the documents throughout the day to make sure everything's good and billing um, it's kind of hard for the disc for that person to kind of keep that going so so that's kind of what I've been doing now that I actually realize 
how many jobs could still be getting added to each day. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, but there's a lot of empty space where I just feel like I don't know what to do right now because I don't like just standing here with nothing to do, you know? Um, I think I'm gonna go to the mower dealer again. I, I've been looking at that Toro 30 inch mower. I've been talking with the guys, trying to get their feedback whether or not they think that that's gonna make them go faster. Um, no, but we don't know, you know? We know that we'll go a lot faster with the grandstand. Everybody understands that, but I just don't wanna spend that money right now. Um, but I may. So the other thing is I may go there and try and see if I can get a deal on a grandstand. Um, so anyway, that's just something I need to just quickly do and, and move on to the next thing. I could work here in the shop and, you know, organize things. It looks kind of empty right now, but um, without the trailers in here. You know, um, I could work on some documents, um, updating some of the, the documents that customers get when we give them an estimate. Um, you know, I mean, I have things to do, but I'm just, I, I'm not an office person, you know? I'm just, I don't wanna do that right now. I feel like, you know what, if, if there's office like document stuff to edit, I know it's super important. Um, if Emily was here, That'd be great for her to be working on that, but I just don't like to do that. And so um, when I think of office stuff like that, I think of holding off until wintertime when I have nothing, literally nothing else to do. That's when I could sit down on the computer and feel like I'm not wasting any time. But, but it's kind of weird because I'm in this new role now where I'm more of like the office person dispatching people, um, and I, and I'm just, I don't really know how to fill my day yet. So that's, that's my problem is I don't really know how to fill. I don't have a routine because I'm just coming in here, getting on the computer, phone's ringing. Let's go take that and see how that goes. It's going to be hard holding this <sighs> and answering it. Long thumbs. This is Freddie. How can I help you? Oh, Hey, good. How are you? Yes, yes, I can. So we'll be. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Those were our prices, but we've raised them since then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'll always be that price. Yeah, it's just those old prices were just there from a long time ago. We've added more crews, so we've had to raise them, and that's kind of the price now. So you're so so we do have. So we have that first time mow, which is like, depending on the height, because we haven't been there in a while. So, you know, um, it, yeah. And then we have the weekly price and then we have the two every two weeks. I don't know if that was on your quote. So there's an every two week price. If you want to wait for every two weeks, uh, you know, and if, and if anything goes longer than two weeks and it goes back to that first time mow kind of situation, you know, uh, but every two weeks would be fifty one seventy six. Yeah, so but every two weeks, if we wait if you wait two weeks, it would be fifty one seventy six. Like, like for every two weeks, you know what I mean? So that comes out to like 20, 
six dollars, something like that, a week. You know. Thirteenth. Let me see. Yeah, so your mo day, like we would try to be out there every Thursday because, or every other Thursday, or on a Thursday because that's when we're in that neighborhood. So what day was that? So today is the 28th. Should I set it up for today and then think about it? Uh huh. Yeah, like if we're mowing every week. Yeah, because, you know, the price goes up because of the height of the grass. I know that, that some, you know, people say, well, every two weeks my lawn doesn't grow very long, but we can't go off of that we have to just imagine that it will grow in two weeks, you know what I mean? So we, we just have our prices for that. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, so we'd be it today, I'm um, sorry, which is the 28th and then the 9th, so we wouldn't be there on the 9th. We'd be there for like the 5th or the 12th. Because of the because of where it is, Thursdays, you know. Although next Thursday um is the 4th of July, like next week's the 4th of July, so we probably wouldn't be there till Friday. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, bye. Okay, so you got that. So basically this customer, uh, she called earlier in the year um, and, and her price was whatever it was I quoted her. Um, last week, we basically raised our prices um, for whatever reason, but now we're, we're priced pretty much where, you know, where we should be. So she, when she canceled, she called back, she emailed last night asking that she wanted to go be back, put on our route. Um, so I quoted her as a new customer because I have no idea what her lawn looks like right now. And I quoted her first time O price and um, her new weekly price, which is about $7 more than it used to be. Um, you know, and in Mo, in the Mo world, that's like a lot. So anyway, it's seven dollars more, and and she's having an issue with that. I, you know, I unfortunately, I I know my costs. I know how much it hurts me every time to make payroll. I can't budge from that number. I mean, there was a lot of awkward silence there. That was probably her hoping that I would say, well, you know, for you, I'll, I'll give you a discount. I can't do that anymore. Um, you know, that, that $7, um, is, that's my profit right there. So I, I can't, I can't do it. I mean, so anyway, she's going to, she's going to talk to her husband, um, you know, she, her other issue is that she wants um, that same price to be in two weeks. If we mow it today, so that's another thing. So she doesn't need us to mow it all the time. She just needs it, she needs us to mow it whenever they can't get around to it or something. It sounds, I'm just guessing they're going on vacation uh, for the next three weeks. 
and she wants us to mow it today and then and then one more time and then they come back and they can start mowing it again so I mean that's another reason to not budge on the price I mean we're this isn't gonna be a long-term customer we've got our prices and and that's the beauty of sending somebody an estimate they could say no, or they can say, go ahead and do it. And there's no hard feelings because we gave them the price up front and they have the option to shop around, do whatever they want. So all I know is if we do this, we put it on the route, we're gonna do the best job we can while we're there. We're gonna edge it perfectly, trim it perfectly, mow it perfectly. We've done this property before, so we have a track record. They, they're calling us back because they probably like the way we do it. So, I mean, all we can do is just give them our price and then do the best job we can so that customer actually just called back and and wanted for us to cut this week and next week um, and and she basically needs us to mow it every time her husband leaves town so you know I want to help as much as possible but I also have to realize I know what I need to make in order to make money and so I just stood firm with my prices her price, I, I was thinking it was more like $7 increase, $6, but it's more like nine. So, I mean, it is a big increase on price um, per week. So, but, you know, she called back and said, go ahead and do it. So, I mean, you, you can't be afraid of raising your prices as long as you understand why you're doing it and you're confident in telling that to the customer, you shouldn't have any problems. So anyway, that's the kind of thing I'm doing today. Um...